What's up guys, BND Gaming here, and today it is Ben here, and I am doing this on my own. Today we are doing a worst to best generations in Pokemon based off of starters. We will rank each generation from worst to best, and then we will go in and rank each starter from worst to best. So, as you can see here, the worst generation for starters I have is generation 5. And I know that there are some people out here who will not agree with my list, but it is completely opinionated, so just deal with it. So right here we have Snivy, Tepig, and Oshawott. And to start off, I'm just going to say I cannot stand Tepig. I mean, the, I'm not going to lie, the first evolution is okay. But then as soon as you evolve into Pig Knight, it just goes to just, I can't even stand looking at that. And so then, Tepig is definitely lowest for me. Plus, there's a lot of fire fighting starters already with Blaziken and Infernape. So that typing is definitely outdated. Next up will have to be Oshawott because I get what you're doing when you go Oshawa to Duat, but then as soon as you go to Samurott, like I, like I can't even, is this a seal? Or is it, I mean it has a sword on its head, and it has a fish tail, it's supposed to be a samurai, it has a big mustache I guess, but it's just, that's just an atrocious look. And so, next is Snivy, and I was considering putting this up higher on the list just because of Snivy because I am such a fan of Snivy in the show and uh, Superior is one of my favorite fully evolved starters. I wish, I wish they would have given it Dragon type. That would have been amazing, but sadly they didn't. And so, Tepig is the worst. Oshawott is wor pretty bad too, but second worst. And then Snivy is, I do love Snivy, but the other two weigh it down so heavily. Next up is Generation 6. So I think a lot of people could agree on Generation 6 being pretty bad. Again, it is another similar situation where there is two bad ones weighing down a good one. And my first bad starter has to be Chespin. I don't like the first evolution. The second evolution just looks like a big ball, and the third evolution is just, I, I mean, you can't, like, what is that? What is that? So, I mean, that's self-explanatory. And then you go to Finnegan, and I do like how the final evolution does become Fire and Psychic. That is, that's pretty nice. I mean, Psychic type as a starter, that does help. And I mean, Delphox doesn't look bad, but I, it's just not great. I mean, it's just a little fox. It's a, another version of Vulpix. So again, Pokemon running out of ideas, that's nothing new to us. And so you come up to Froki, and you see the first evolution, and you're like, okay, yeah, whatever. But then once you fully evolve into Greninja, you were like, yeah, that's the Pokemon I want. And that is so nice looking. Greninja is a great starter to have. I mean, water dark, that's awesome. And just the de pure design of it is amazing to look at. So, second to, like, second worst is Generation 6. After Generation 6, we have Generation 7. And I would have ranked this, I would have ranked Generation 6 higher than generation 7 but I just cannot stand the first evolution of all these starters the final evolution of them is fine except for Primarina I do not like that one I don't enjoy it but the first evolution of all of them is horrible so the worst one in my opinion out of this generation is definitely Puplio I mean it's it's fine water fairy is cool but there's just too much going on with this final evolution. And to go from this, which, I mean, I don't want to misgender anything, but that looks fully like a girl. 
from a male looking pup Leo is just a little weird to me. But then, so after pup Leo comes Litten, because I mean it's just such a simple design, it's just a cat. And then somehow you end up getting a, a, a wrestler, a Nacho Libre wrestler. So I mean, it's cool, he has really cool moves, he looks cool, big muscles. But then Rowlet is one of my least favorite looking ones. I like his little bow tie, I'm not gonna lie. But then Decidueye is amazing. I love the Robin Hood look. It is Grass Ghost, which is awesome. And it's easily the pick I have every time when I'm playing Sun and Moon. So, I mean, Decidueye is really cool. Incineroar is, he's okay. And Primarina is just yuck. Poplio's yuck, Litten's yuck, Rowlet's yuck, but the final evolutions and the second evolutions definitely save these. And so, next up on the list, this is where we're getting into the final four, and this is where it starts to get pretty good. Generation 3. So, you're saying, I know, I should have ranked this a little higher probably because the original Generations is everybody's favorite, but Generation 3... Now these top four all have like great starters, like there's not a lot to complain about, but it's it just has to be done. Generation 3, probably in my opinion, Torchic is my least favorite. I do really do enjoy Blaziken, firefighting, and his mega evolution is amazing. But Torchic just looks like a little chick, I mean it's nothing intimidating, which I get, they're just the first for starters but I know they could have done better and next probably Mudkip just because Marsh Stomp just creeps me out the way he looks it's really creepy just not a fan and uh, water ground is awesome typing and then Trico by far is the best I mean just going through the whole evolution and from the show how they were always so sassy it was awesome. And then Sceptile, I mean his Mega Evolution, he has a Christmas tree on his tail which is just amazing. So obviously Sceptile is the best. Moving on, we have Generation 4. Generation 4 is the first time where I really started playing Pokemon games, like seriously, and then I went back and played the other generations. But Generation 4 is what really got me into it, so it's really nostalgic for me. And I mean, there's just not much I can complain about these starters, it's just the other two are just that good. And so, on my list for Generation 4, the worst starter in Generation 4, which I can't even say worst because they're all amazing, would have to be Turtwig, because the other two are just too great to not have in front of Turtwig. I mean, he is amazing, grass ground, Torterra looks amazing. He has a giant tree on his back. Next up would have to be Piplup. Just because of the first evolution of Piplup and the second evolution. But once you get to Empoleon, that is just so menacing looking and it is so amazing. Next would have to be Chimchar. Chimchar is the one I always picked. I loved my Infernape, level 100. Firefighting again though. But just look at that thing. like. That's how you do a starter Pokemon. So, top two, and I know you guys aren't gonna like me for what's in second, but Generation 1. Now, Generation 1 is in second because my next one, which you already know what it is, is just that great. Now, Generation 1 is very nostalgic for everybody, but I didn't start playing it until just recently because I just didn't start with Generation 1, I guess. And I'm, I do love Generation 1, the starters are amazing, it's it's a great generation. So right here we have Bulbasaur, probably is my third place here because, I mean, I do love how they kept it with the bulb on his back and then it blooms in the flower when he's Venusaur. It's just the other two are that great. And I do love the Megas for all these. I mean, I just recently learned that Venusaur, um, is based off of a frog because when playing uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu 
he hops around when he's behind you, which I think is really funny. And so next up, you're probably going to hate me for this too. Second place would be Charmander and Charizard because I'm a huge Blastoise fan. Always who I picked in the games. It is just, I don't know, just something about him. So Charizard's Charizard. That, that needs no explanation. I mean, just look at him. So majestic. But then you come over to Blastoise and Squirtle and it is just... I mean, he's got cannons on his back. And his Mega Evolution's got a giant cannon on his back. I mean, that's just so cool. And he always had great moves. And number one is Generation 2. Now, I picked Generation 2 because, of, I mean, my favorite Pokemon game probably to this day is Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which is just an amazing game. I mean, you get two generations in it, you get the best starters in the game. And it's just a great, they follow, it was the first Pokemon game to have them following behind you if they were in your first slot. And I mean, the starters in this generation were just unmatched. So in third place is Chikorita, obviously the most underrated, under, under ranked one. Like nobody really ever picks Chikorita, but if you, I mean, if you end up with a Meganium, you still have a great unit on your team. And I mean just look like that's that's just a better Venusaur and then you come over and second place would be Cyndaquil I mean you have a eruption coming out of your back and just I mean he's a volcano he's a volcano Pokemon I mean, how cool is that and then Totodile and Feraligatr easily number one and they're not just number one because he's a giant alligator on two legs I mean that's cool enough but he learns Ice Fang by level up, which can just, I mean, he, he can basically get you through the all of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. You're struggling with a Dragon type, Ice Fang it. If you're struggling with a Psychic or a Ghost type, use Crunch. I mean, he's just so amazing and he's so diverse. And that Generation 2 is my winner. I mean, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. and who you have as your number ones and uh, let me know if you guys also agree this has been BND Gaming hope you enjoyed signing out